G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Today we are shooting with the Hobo Light Avant outside. It is about one meter from my face and it is running at about 75% output. Before we jump into this episode, I wanted to just quickly mention that Capture One has just announced support for the pixel shift files that come out of NX Studio. NX Studio creates a NEFX file, which is specific to these pixel shift files that have been combined. So they are a new type of raw file, which can now be exported and imported into Capture One. So you can still fully work with a native raw file, but it's now 180 megapixels or 96 megapixels, depending on which camera you used. This is extremely exciting and it has been downloaded and it has been tested and I can't wait to bring you a full video on pixel shift, how good it looks and also how it works in Capture One and the whole workflow of going from NX Studio to Capture One and we still have a raw file. This is really cool. Today we want to talk about the ongoing success of Nikon with the release of their latest financials. Q3 of the year ending 2024 March is out and Q3 has been more profitable than anticipated for the imaging unit. Now, Nikon as a whole is a profitable and successful company. It's broken into five units and the imaging is the largest by far. It's also very profitable. And Nikon states in their own formal documents that you can download from Nikon.com, which is Nikon Japan, that this is driven in the imaging unit by the Z8, the ZF, and their extraordinary range of lenses. Very exciting news for someone like me who sat in this very chair trying to bring some calm and some sense and some reality and some logic to this notion that Nikon was going somewhere. They were never going anywhere. You can just rip off the Band-Aid, do it in a few quarters, and you're done, and you can move on. It was never a thing. Some people tried to make it a thing, but it was never a thing. So it's really fantastic to sit here where astonishing products like the Z9, the Z8, the ZF, the Planner, the 85mm, the 600PF, and they are driving Nikon's profits. And so for those that like the nerdy details, we're gonna jump into some of them. And for those of you that are not so into it, the bottom line is Nikon is doing well. The Z8, the ZF is doing well. The lenses are doing well. And you might also be interested before you go to know that lithography is doing well. Now you might wonder, what is lithography? Well, lithography is how silicon chips are etched and they're etched in order to create circuits and other usages. Nikon are one of the few manufacturers that make lithography machines. And we know they sell them to Intel, for example. I think I was looking in financial papers, not other areas to see that, yeah, they sell them to Intel, but they definitely sell them to lots of other people as well, because we can see here that they're selling machines in their financial reports. And there are plenty of foundries in the world. Foundries include Tower Jazz, the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing company, TSMC. Sony, for example, are another fab who I don't believe make their own lithography machines where Canon do. And there are countless other fabs as we can see here on the screen right now. Nikon have had a good year, a profitable year in their lithography machine department. And I have more videos coming on that front soon. What do Nikon's lithography machines do? And I can tell you, not only do they make processors, but lithography machines make sensors. Uh-huh. And well, Nikon is a company that needs a lot of sensors. Is it at all possible that Nikon machines are used to make Nikon sensors? The idea of their machines making their sensors, well, it makes sense. Okay, and before we jump into the details, we are shooting on the Z8 firmware 2.0 with the 50mm 1.2 at 1.8 today. Being a one-man show, we're not making stuff for Netflix today. Although, hopefully one day I might be making stuff for Netflix. I've got a plan. And if you'd like to contribute to the Netflix I've Got a Plan fund, please do. Hit that thank you super chat thing. 
And at the end of this episode, I want to very quickly talk about the fact that we have Nikon in space. Yes, the Z9 has gone to space and they're going to hang out and live on the space station. How cool is that? We will jump into the details a little bit later in this episode. Alrighty. The revenue for quarters one to three last year was 184 billion yen and this year is 221 billion yen. Yet the profits have only changed by about 2 billion yen. It's not reflected that extra 40 billion yen in the operating profit. Now, this year we've had a few recalls, along with what I think is gonna be a very strong product lineup moving forwards. And of course, you're doing the R&D and you're doing the manufacturing and the prototyping over the last couple of years, including this previous nine month period. It may well be that R&D and prototyping and manufacturing has had something to do with the profits not growing in line with the revenue. There's no statement made here specific to that. What they do say is both revenue and operating profit grew sales volumes of mirrorless cameras, mainly the Z8 and the ZF and interchangeable lenses of mirrorless cameras increased. The ASP, which is the average selling price, rose with the shift towards mid high end cameras and the weaker yen helped. In Q3, three months secured an operating margin of over 20%. So this quarter specifically, had a revenue of 84 billion yen with a profit of 17 billion yen, which was a 21.1% operating profit. Now let's talk about the forecast for the year ending the 31st of March, 2024. Revenue, company total forecast of 705 billion yen has been revised upwards by 15 billion yen from the previous forecast. Precision equipment to revise upward 13 billion, mainly due to the increased sales volume of FPD lithography systems. And that's what I was talking about before. Nikon cell lithography systems, not only that etch chips, but they also etch high volume flat screens. So TV screens, monitors, there's monitors used everywhere. Well, Nikon make the equipment, which is part of the manufacturing process of those displays. This is a massive business. Healthcare to revise upward 2 billion yen to reflect strong sales in life science solutions and the effects of the weaker yen in Q3. Operating profit, company total forecast 36 billion, revised up 2 billion. Imaging products to revise upwards 1 billion to reflect the effects of a weaker yen in Q3. Precision equipment to revise upward 4 billion, mainly due to the increased revenues in F. PD lithography business. Healthcare to revise downward, that's profit, 3 billion yen as a one-time cost. And this is the sort of thing that companies do. So maybe Nikon acquired something, maybe they bought a new building. It's unclear in this particular document, but it's a one-off cost. The company total forecast is for 27 billion. The parent that actually owns Nikon will be making 27 billion yen. That's got to make them happy. Forecast for the year ending March 31st, 2024 imaging products business. The previous financial year, the imaging products business had revenue of 227 billion yen. Now this is going up by almost 50 billion yen to 275 billion yen. So that means a lot more product or a lot more higher end product, I suppose like a 600 mil PF, a planner, and actual operating profit has gone from 42 billion yen to 44 billion yen. Nikon has gone from selling 700,000 cameras, interchangeable lens cameras in the previous financial year to the year that we're currently in is predicted that they sell 800,000 interchangeable lens cameras. So that's an increase of 100,000 cameras. That's a significant number. And it's interesting that they've stated that the Z8 and the ZF are the majority of sales. So we could extrapolate from that that easily tens of thousands of each of the Z8 and the ZF have been sold. And that is very exciting and very significant. And I wonder, considering it's 800,000 for the financial year, is it even hundreds of thousands? And if you were to guesstimate that the Z8 and the ZF, let's say made up 
25% each. Of 800,000. This is me making up numbers, but we can see here that that would be 200,000 units for the Z8 and 200,000 units for the ZF. Either way, it's got to be pretty big numbers for the ZF and the Z8 because they're both new. Maybe not so high for the ZF because it's only been in market something like six months. Again, this is on units sold 800,000. Very impressive, very exciting. And if we look at lenses, lenses sold the previous year was 1.16 million lenses. And this year they're predicting 1.25 million. So again, an increase of 90,000 lenses. That is a significant number of lenses being sold. And this is great that the numbers are trending upwards in both cases more bodies sold, more lenses sold. And I wanted to quickly talk about the precision equipment business, which has gone from 203 billion yen to 213 billion yen. Revenue has increased, revising upward 13 billion, previous forecast mainly due to increased sales volumes of FPD lithography systems for large panels. So I believe that's your large panel TV screens and other large screens, computer screens. Anywhere there's a large flat screen, that's what we're talking about here. So Nikon, they make lithography systems that create those screens. It's part of the manufacturing process. It's a very serious and important part. So Nikon, a part of major television manufacture. Who do they sell to? Do they sell to Sony, LG, TLC, Toshiba? Who knows? There are a lot of TV manufacturers out there it's a massive business, Nikon a part of it. Operating profit is up on the previous forecast, revising upward 4 billion previous forecast, mainly due to increased sales volumes of the FPD lithography systems. But they do expect operating profit for overall precision equipment business to decline year on year on lower sales volumes of FPD lithography systems and lower servers revenues in the semiconductor lithography business. I believe Nikon not only sell these machines, but they also recondition them and service them. Perhaps their machines are just too good that they don't need to be serviced as much, I'm not sure. But this is still a profitable unit that is turning over a lot of revenue. And here we just have a breakdown of, so it's very clear from a visual perspective, for those people that are visual like me, I'm very visual, you can see what the different segments of Nikon are, and here they are. And I just wanted to touch on revenue breakdown. The imaging division part of Nikon is very important. It's making up 42% of overall revenue and that's gone up from 40 percent the previous year the previous year it was 184 billion this year it's 221 billion in revenue next is precision equipment so that's the lithography machines that make processors sensors televisions and so on these two units make up over 70 percent of nikon's total income and it means as imaging is so important to nikon they will keep driving it and driving it hard and spending R&D on it. It's also interesting to see how sales break up around the world. And there has been a significant jump in sales in Europe. They have jumped from 15% to 21% of overall sales, 70 billion yen to 109 billion yen. What that says to me is European customers have been very excited about imaging and the Z8 and the ZF have definitely hit the spot along with all of these magnificent lenses. This does not break down by by segment. We don't know if that's all driven by imaging, but considering imaging is 42% of the total company's revenue, we certainly can extrapolate from that that imaging is some of it. China has dropped a tiny amount. Uh, others, which is where I am, hello, stayed much the same at 19%. Japan has increased by 2% from 18 to 20. And interestingly, the biggest decline is in the United States from 27% to 23%. Now, as I said, this, is, this pie chart is not just based on imaging. It's based on the entirety of Nikon. We might get an imaging breakdown in the full annual report that will come after March 30, but I'd be interested to see that. Finally, I want to look at R&D expenditure. So R&D in the imaging unit has actually increased from 18.8 .8 billion yen to 19 billion yen. Just to give you an idea and put that in perspective, they're spending almost $130 million on R&D just for the imaging unit. And Nikon as a whole spend almost half a billion dollars each year, or in this particular year, 
on R&D. Nikon Z9 goes to space. Space station astronauts receive Nikon's flagship full-frame mirrorless camera. And this is for conducting research and documenting life aboard the International Space Station. Nikon Z9 bodies, along with an impressive selection of Nikkor Z lenses, have been sent to the orbiting laboratory on a commercial resupply service mission for NASA. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft carried on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched from Space Launch Complex Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on January 30th. The Z9 uses the latest mirrorless technology and is replacing the current inventory of Nikon D6 and D5 digital SLR cameras on the space station, with the D5 in service since 2017. Since the Apollo 15 mission more than 50 years ago, Nikon cameras and lenses have been used by NASA for space exploration on various missions and space shuttles. Starting in 1999, Nikon cameras, the Nikon F5 and Nikkor lenses have been used aboard the orbiting laboratory to aid in scientific research, maintenance and aiding astronauts capturing iconic images of the Earth, the heavens and beyond. The gear is used both inside the space station but also in the unrelenting vacuum of space in a special blanket developed by NASA. In 2008, NASA took delivery of the D2XS digital SLR and in 2013, 38 Nikon D4 digital SLR cameras and 64 Nikon lenses were delivered to the space station crew. 38, is there 38 crew? That is a lot of cameras. The Nikon Z series of mirrorless cameras launching in 2018 and since then has benefited from the latest innovation constant firmware updates and rapidly expanding line of Nikkor Z lenses. The Z9 is Nikon's flagship mirrorless full-frame camera, well regarded for its extremely robust build, unwavering reliability for professionals and next generation technology. The Z9 is the first camera of its type to eliminate a shutter, minimizing moving parts for maximum durability. The cameras used on the orbiting laboratory are physically unmodified, meaning terrestrial consumers have access to the same build quality as the space station crew in space. This is a testament certifying that Nikon technology and the Z9 is capable of thriving in the extreme rigors of living in zero gravity and space exploration. While the camera is physically the same, Nikon engineers work directly with NASA to create a custom dedicated firmware to better serve the astronauts and the environment in space. This includes expanding noise reduction to faster shutter speeds to account for the constant bombardment of cosmic radiation that the crew and gear are subject to about the space station. Additional changes have been made to the file naming sequence as well as default settings and controls that are optimized for life aboard the orbiting laboratory and when enclosed in the protective covering for exterior missions. Changes have also been made to the in-camera FTP and transfer protocol to simplify the astronauts workflow increase efficiency and reduce power consumption when sending images from space to Earth. As NASA integrates the latest technology of Nikon's mirrorless camera system, a selection of lenses has also been sent to assist astronauts. The shipment consists of 13, 13 Z9s, the lucky, lucky 13, a total of more than 15 Nikkor Z lenses, including super telephoto and micro lenses and 15 F to Z number two adapters because of course they can continue to use all of that 64 lenses that they sent way back. Okay everybody, well it's great news for Nikon. Nikon are in space. Nikon have pixel shift that's working with the industry and Nikon are making lots of cash. What's not good? Bring on the weekend. Well, it's been very good to see you. I'd love to know your thoughts about all of that stuff. And let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Nikon in space? 13 Z9s in space, along with all of those lenses put together. I think, uh, what was that, 60 something, almost 80 lenses in space now. It's a lot of lenses for those people to play with. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share.
and please like. All right. Bye for now.